starts. Oh, I think the recording is holding. Okay, carry on. Cheers. Um, right, so I was just basically talking about uh, how at the beginning of last year I set myself some very open goals. So on the board it was uh, taking flight, uh, Carl Sniper short stories, and outrunners. Uh, I think it was Riley's runners at the point. I don't even think it was Bunker Hunter at that point. Um, and they were just very open goals about things that I wanted to achieve that year. However, they were too open, right? There was no breakdown of how to achieve these goals. There was no, right, so to get, so to complete taking flight, what have you got to do to do that? Well, break it down. You've got a, you, well, you've sort of got a starting point with picking up trash, but then from there, you've got to sort of work out the nut story, and then you've got to do the Corey and Trouble stuff, picking up the Alexis, all that, all right? Break it down, make it easier for yourself. Don't just say, oh, publish taking flight because that doesn't fucking work right it doesn't no, not happening um so this year um i've got my two or next year 2019 plan it breaks this stuff down it tells me what i need to do before i, I do other things so to in order to get taken flight out, this is just an example in order to get taken flight out i feel that i should also be working on or have an idea of the destiny stories that we've sort of extracted from Taking Flight, mm -hmm. right? So to to really get into Taking Flight properly, I feel like I need to get rid of the mind baggage that is the destiny stuff so I can properly focus down on it and, you know, and a couple of those stories do lead into one another. So that's how I'm breaking it down now and in order to get destiny de uh, I think I've called it forging destiny uh, which is just those three like I think her trials is in the short stories right currently yes and then after that you've got her escaping to our chaos meeting Risto and doing the convoy job and then ending up with Zhao so those last four are removing um, Destiny's Trials, which working title, we'll figure that out. Uh, the other four stories make up the Forging Destiny thing, which are all the stories that have been removed from Taking Flight that involve mm -hmm. her until they later meet up much later on. So, <laughs> I'm breaking it down. This is me setting goals now, breaking stuff down and making it more digestible. Um, Bloody hair on my tea, how offensive. <laughs> so yes, hello for our reviewers as well. <laughs> this is, uh, I think, uh, first proper uh, Kyle Snow writing corner uh, since September, maybe? September or even August. And uh, we are slowly getting back into all sorts of interesting uh, stuff. In previous video, we discussed uh, Nox's solo thing that is coming out, well, tomorrow or today, <coughs> depending on how I upload these videos, 1st of, uh, of December. And uh, while we were chatting in between recordings, we started chatting about uh, planning and timeline and such, and I just randomly hit record to keep it all in the annals. So that's that's where we are right now. <laughs> Keep talking. Good move. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I, we did cover this in another video, but Outrunners is indeed coming out uh, on the first of December. A uh, bunch of short stories set separately from the Curse Nova Universe. It's in uh, slightly. Uh, it's in the UK, set slightly in the future, and. Uh, it's got literally nothing to do with Kyle Nova, so <laughs> it's available on Amazon, you can go check that out. Uh, yeah, I had good fun writing it. That's what's been keeping my attention recently. <laughs> uh, something else that has been keeping my attention is... Do, do you know what I mean when I say the quiet times, right? Mm -hmm. there's, there's that section after... Uh, I think it... Yeah, it's before Deja Vu, but after other stuff has resolved mm -hmm. and it's just sort of everybody chilling out doing missions from that mm -hmm. facility um occasionally i get a whiff of a story idea and i've been 
I've, I've been, been writing, writing the ca the quote unquote short, uh, quiet time stories. Mm -hmm. um, there's a few of them, and I'm 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 almost certain that about one percent of them will probably make it into the final cut. But they are good fun, um, and yeah, because to be honest with you, I don't really. All I know is that. X characters are going to be at this location at this time. I don't know mm -hmm. what's happened in the story okay. up until that point, and really, the quiet times is way, way in the future. But I've, I've been having fun writing for those things. So it's like uh, um, it's like a period of uh, character development moments, possibly going uh, on with the known characters, the characters that that we are already familiar with uh, in regard of taking flight and or deja vu yeah okay yeah. so in a sense this is also a way of connecting the individual stories with the big story it just in a less grandiose and less worrisome way yeah <laughs> what I like about the quiet times is that I can take it easy like there's no real um, uh, what's the word? Responsibility? Uh, responsibility <laughs> and there's no real... Burden? Oh, I'm sure I'll get that word. Yeah, burden works as well. There's no real... Expectations! Mm. There's no expectations when you're writing Quiet Times. It's just a good jaunt. It feels like a hybrid of the forum stories, but using the rules that we've... Um, we decided for Siege, like the mm. the assumptions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's a very free-flowing kind of feel. Um, obviously there's too much dialogue. That seems to be one of my massive problems, is that my characters can't just get to the point of a conversation. They have to go three pages in before they're like, so what the fuck are we doing? You know. So <laughs> there's, there's a bit of that. Um, but I think that's just a general problem with my writing, and more material is good. In the beginning. Yeah. Besides, too much, uh, too much dialogue fluff is something that's quite easy to cut out in, mm. in post. <laughs> yeah. So that um, <clears throat> that outrunners we were talking about outrunners in the other video about how there was a section where uh, Rachel was teaching Izzy about electronics and it and it spanned like two pages. Well, mm -hmm. a good chunk of that was dialogue with uh, Rachel explaining to Izzy about how. Uh, about how electrons flowed and shit like that. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like it was there was there was a real mess of mm -hmm. conversation, uh, and we cut a lot of it out, and it and it worked, right? It, mm -hmm. it, I was I was pleased with the original product, but then when I exposed it to people, shout out to Claire, thank you very much for the feedback. Um, it didn't it didn't work, right? It, it was too bogged down with details, and the conversation was really hard to keep track of. Cut a load of that dialogue stuff out bang, it flows so much better, the crux of what you're trying to get across is still there, and everything works, and you've told the story that you want to tell, without people falling asleep, <laughs> looking in <laughs> their hands, uh, electronics, you know, so. <laughs> Let me tell you all about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, so, it, yeah, dialogue seems to be my big thing, but I'm working on it, I'm seeing my, my flaws, and I'm trying to rein it in a little bit. Jack and Ada uh, in the eighth story of Outrunners, they have some... They get bored of talking to each other, uh. if that makes sense. Like they, they, they don't really hold too long of conversations and when they do, they're generally... Um, they start out generally quite amicable with each other. Like They try and work together. And then the conversation descends into something because they don't agree on a particular method or how to approach the apocalyptic situation that they find themselves in. And then the conversation ends quite abruptly with one of them sort of just saying, oh, fine, we'll do what you want to do. <laughs> you know, and, and so for the rest fine. of the time, uh, until the next conversation, they're quite grouchy with one another and they're quite angry. But the situation that they find themselves in Obviously, they they sort of need to get along with one another mm. because otherwise, it they could die, and that's not what either of them wants. Yeah, so it's like either get along or don't survive. Yeah, or, or but yeah, basically, <laughs> Jack and Ada. There's a real sort of uh, Jack's 
very down to earth. He thinks that the apocalypse is the worst thing to happen ever. Uh, he's quite annoyed that he's never go he's probably never going to be able to get on a plane again and just fly to another country and just chill out. You know, uh, he thinks like all uh, cell phones, for example. Ada at one point pulls a USB uh, solar panel out. And she's like, "Oh, cool! We can charge some stuff now." And Jack's like, "Fine, I'll charge my cell phone." And and he's just he's really dicky about it, you know. <laughs> but he makes a good point in a way that, well, what are we gonna do with cell phones now? There's no one to fucking call. Everybody's dead, right? So, <laughs> uh, so compared to Ada, who's really like, "I love the apocalypse. This is fantastic. <laughs> you know, yeah, let's let's scavenge." buildings and drive these massive trucks around she's all about that but the two of them really conflict uh, mm. uh but yeah, they, they, I, I love them both jack was the original outrunner he was the one who sort of started everything i, I mm. think i started writing like a little story where he's yeah. in a scrapyard somewhere and he gets into a fight with someone and tries to escape he jumps in his van and there's a woman in the back of his van and they end up teaming up together uh it's come a long, long way since there, man. Real, real distance. He's mm. not even that same character anymore. So. It sounds like uh, not only have you had uh, quite a bit of fun riding the Outrunners, but you have also mm, got into like character analysis, character study, and that that sort of stuff with it. Mm. Like in inadvertently learning. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think it was intentional. My, but <clears throat> I didn't want all the characters to be the same. Mm. Like there, there's, uh, um, and and that, and this was tricky for me because as we discussed earlier, it's a six to two split between males and females so the females there's six female characters and there's two male characters mm. they're all they're all people it's real easy to write for like them if you just treat them as people right mm -hmm. that's how i've always done it but it there are some uh, you've got to do a bit more work to differentiate them from one another like mm. all the characters so ada can't be like rachel and rachel mm. can't be like izzy they've all got to have their own individual backstory so why why is izzy an anchor for example well she's there because she's getting a tour of the place but why is rachel at anchor well she's an electrician and her whole thing is she's there to inspect some wiring and she didn't even really want to be here because she knows the place is riddled with asbestos uh, as long as she doesn't disrupt it she should be fine but really she just wants to get out of there mm. and ultimately she's ended up spending a fucking weekend underground do you know what I mean like they're, mm -hmm, there's mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. uh, but they're different people from one another yeah so not just Izzy. the okay yeah, yeah go on Oh, sorry, it, it's just that Izzy is really into exploring these places. She's the bunker hunter, right? She She's always getting these tours to these places. She's <laughs> always signing up with groups on forums to go exploring like these awesome places. So mm -hmm. She's the bunker hunter, man. She's mm -hmm. into this. But she's not a big fan of the apocalypse. She was happy to explore these places when they were tourist oh, okay. destinations okay. and that sort of thing. Right? She preferred legitimate urban exploration. Okay. Um, so they're they're two different people and the way they deal with things differently yeah they're friends but later on in in other stories they also clash on certain ways of dealing with things so if for example Ra rachel's car were to get broken into izzy would try and see oh they're obviously desperate they want food blah blah, blah. rachel sees it as they're stealing my shit man that's not on <laughs> right so <laughs> they, there's a bit of a set to about all that <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. So, it, yeah it's like on. it's like when uh, during a disaster when you have the group that you favor you describe it as they found food if it's the group mm. that you don't favor doing the same thing you say they were looting mm, yeah and that that <laughs> that terminology also comes up as well um, Ada's trying to explain to someone that they're scavengers and the person that she's with prefers the term oh what is it uh recovery specialists or something to that effect <laughs> like he's trying to pr he's trying to dress it up in a way that it doesn't make them sound like they're looting the place um so 
procurement agent. Extraction agents. expert. Yeah, <laughs> but a procurement agent, extraction expert, something to, to that effect. Uh, he's just trying to pretty it up. But yeah, I've had I've had such great fun writing out runners, and I hope I hope it comes through in the right, and I hope pe- I hope other people uh, enjoy it. But even if they don't, and this is going to sound really weird, but even if uh, from the ruins turns out to be a total shambolic failure, I'm still going to write Bunker Hunter, mm-hmm. and I'm still going to write Riley's Runners. Like it stop me. Like if it's all twenty one star reviews, uh, mm-hmm. it's not. I'm, I've still got other stories to tell, and. Uh, I had fun telling them, so really, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it does a little bit, but yeah, I, I enjoyed myself, and if people enjoy it as well, then win a win a chicken dinner, right? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Sorry, I sort of went on, on a bit of a tangent there. Good for you. Yeah. <sighs> You've been busy as well, though, right? Mm-hmm. You've been doing. I'll, I'll let you explain. <laughs> it's well, exciting news. I'm I'm thinking where where to start. So, well, in the begin the beginning has to do with Chaos Numa projects. So, like back back in last September, actually. So, back in last year, uh, we had the idea of. Uh, offering uh, Seeker for the local uh, fan uh, sci-fi fan news blog site thingy I refuse to say the, the word fanzine because it sounds weird to me uh, <laughs> I don't know why but uh, it comes from a different era I think I'm from mm. a new, uh, new generation <laughs> Something, something, something. <laughs> anyway, so uh, the the site, site blog, magazine, whatever, uh, is the local most active uh, sci-fi and speculative fiction and 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 fantasy things uh, releaser, or like they release uh, news and stories and uh, opinions, etc. And uh, we sent in the letter to offer up seeker and next thing i know uh, i was like okay i'm gonna translate it myself and then uh, uh, fast forward uh, half a year we've had uh, the whole seeker novella uh, split in six uh, parts each of which uh, i have uh, translated or adapted into Estonian and uh, next thing I know um, I've decided to go on the uh, on the yearly convention uh, the the local thing uh, get talking to people over there have fun keep talking to people over there uh, join the uh, local sci-fi writing uh, workshop which takes place weekly. Uh, keep talking to the crowd that uh, that puts all the effort into this uh, uh, blog magazine issue thing. And uh, so I think uh, in October, I think during during October already, I was like assisting the head uh, head editor a little bit. And I think at, at the beginning of November, uh, yeah, at the end of October and the beginning of November, she was like, yeah, you're on board now, so <laughs> you're an editor now. <laughs> so, so, so there is that. And uh, during all that, uh, I've been uh, regularly going to the uh, sci-fi slash uh, fantasy slash uh, horror uh, writing workshops. And uh, during that time, I've I've actually finished two short stories, and the third short story that's that I'm working on right now is actually set in Chaos Nova. So we've we've come back full circle, <laughs> and uh, and this time uh, I can I can tell a little bit about it. Uh, the the given short story is a completely new story. It doesn't revolve around any characters we know so far, although 
it is related to my player character's uh, alternate version, kind of, sort of. And uh, it's basically, it could be a completely standalone story. It takes place uh, during a uh, winter, winter half of a local moon where a unit of base builders and fighters uh, uh, have been sent on what they think is a training exercise. And uh, the I would say that the bulk of the story is all about uh, their everyday shit, like the technology they use and their little everyday troubles and everyday solutions and, and all that and the crew dynamics. Uh, although it won't be very focused on uh, on individual characters or anything, like it's it's it's, it's not it's not crew building porn, uh, like uh, like Deja Vu is. It's more like uh, I, I don't even know. More yeah, more like uh, unit based thing. That sounded really coherent, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and it's it's called it's always warm in the base camp. Ah. Ah, yeah. Ah. It's always warm in the base camp. Yeah. The uh it could also be translated as it's always warm uh at the behind the lines, but since there is no actual fighting going on, there is no active front, I think base camp uh, makes more sense. And just that this Estonian word kind of applies to both. Oh, very cool. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm and uh, in the pipeline, somewhere in the pipeline, deep in the pipeline, uh, soonish, maybe early next year, I'm also planning to take our advanced notes and advanced. Uh, our preparation of scribe and the doctor and finalize it in Estonian and once it finalized it there it is <laughs> what, what, what? Ah, aha right there oh, the in doctor. the outline yeah. <laughs> so so yeah because uh, we uh, we were able to get the story pretty far uh, I think there's even some clean text in there somewhere uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> some, some. Uh, and uh, or or at least it's there. Uh, at least there's plenty of proto text, like uh, the fragments that are one step away from clean text. So I'm sort of scheming to finalize it in Estonian, and then it will be very easy to flip it back to to English. But. Before I can do that, I have also agreed to uh, try and come up with a story for a uh, shared world uh, that some of the guys in the writing workshop are, are releasing. So I think they have like five or six books out right now. And mm. they started off uh, with just three authors. Uh, I, I think it's w whatever that format was, where you have short stories that add into the same larger story. Uh, yeah, tableau, uh, allegedly. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. at first, uh, I think the first book was just three people writing into that uh, into that story thread, and with each uh, latter book, they they have included more and more uh, authors from the local. Uh, uh, from the local sci-fi slash uh, speculative writing scene, so so oh, there is cool. that, and uh, the uh, the set date to provide a proper draft is uh, is early February. So it's like as soon as I as soon as I get this uh, winter story. Uh, into into any shape I'm gonna uh, I'm, I'm gonna try and work out the uh, the shared world thing and and then while doing that I think uh, I will I will also try and get 
fit into the, the that whole scheme that you have on your on your wall there. <laughs> <laughs> the mess. Yeah, because uh, I have I have I've seen I've seen somebody updating the uh Chaos Nova Large arc document in the in the shared folder. <laughs> I haven't I don't know if it's so much updating it or if it's cutting the flat. Ah, <laughs> even better. Yeah. yeah. So so yeah. I'm I'm sort of I, I haven't I haven't looked yet, but I'm sort of on the standby, ready to jump into that as well. Uh it's probably but, yeah, it's it's okay because uh, I was gonna say that it's not ready, but it's mm. never gonna a it's never gonna be ready, right? And b we we get into these stories and we change stuff anyway. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's more of like a shadow of an outline. Yeah, <laughs> an imagine, yeah. an it, imagining of, a, it's, of an it's outline. More like, <laughs> it's more like an expression of it intention than an outline. Yes. So it's like we intend to go there. But if it turns out during telling the story that we can't go there, then we will go elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Or if it's better to go here instead, then mm -hmm. yeah, we'll do yeah. Because I think I think when we were writing Seeker, we had a couple of moments. I think there was one time when we were talking about having a flashback chapter, for example, mm -hmm. and then in the end that didn't pan out. So I think the original story had a flashback with Jewel yep. escaping our chaos, yep. and then we sort of evolved it a little bit into it being a flashback from her mum, and then that yep. then later, later evolved into her diary tellings. Uh, so, th I mean... Uh, <clears throat> And, it was never planned for, but it and, went in a better place. Uh, I think it took even longer detour because the diary sections at first, uh, when I was uh, working out the background information, at first I thought that the, uh, that I would put together like a supplement story, uh, like a separate short story that supplements Seeker. But then uh, when I when I worked out the uh, worked out the uh, the chronology and what what's happened to to whom etc etc and it's like actually if I just made it into audio recordings and put it into the main text itself it would it would work just fine. Mwah. Yeah. Perfect. So it was like the goal. We we knew what the goal was, but we didn't know what the way of getting there was. Mm. We we knew that we knew the we knew the whys, but not the hows. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think uh, I think that's uh, that's that's pretty much the uh, uh, the approach that uh, I take when looking at the big arc of Casanova stories. Yeah. Is that I I want to know the why, while being well aware that the how part can vary. Yeah, there's a lot going on in that document. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's not have really. Hmm? Go on. No, I was I was already gonna go on, but if you have anything to add about the arcs and documents and and plans and that. Uh, not really. I mean, they're taking up the entirety of my wall. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like every time I get out of bed in the morning, <laughs> I walk past it. I'm like, oh yeah, that's the thing. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot there, but I think with my breaking down of objectives and goals, hmm. uh, it's it's a more surmountable problem. Yeah. Uh, and also, there's I don't know if you can see this, but this is split personality one last job, split personality convoy, and split personality blood machine. Uh, hmm. These first two are essentially short stories now. I suppose this one's a short... One Last Job's a short story. That gets included in the short story collection. Mm -hmm. uh, Convoy is like... Maybe shorter than Seeker, let's mm. say. Like, there's a very simple job that I have to do there, but it sets up stories and builds the connection between like Gathran, Blackstar, Fallon, Luna, Rogue, all that. And then Split Personality Blood Machine is going to be the full-length one that I want to do. <coughs> but... Sorry, I'm on a real tangent here. <laughs> These two are shorter now than they were originally. Like, uh, One Last Job was Split Personality 1, right? Mm. Uh, Convoy was Split Personality 2, 
and that was a full length book that detailed the whole thing with Tayborn and taking over Parado- Paradise and all this sort of shit mad mm. full length story and Blood Machine is still a full length story the thing I'm trying to get across is Jesus Webbs <laughs> that now that they are shorter they are easier to write easier to manage easier to get what we need to get out there out there mm. in terms of story mm-hmm. and now it's not such a massive oh my god this is a mountain that we're never going to climb uh, <laughs> so that that was the point I was trying to get across I was really long length way of going about it but that's what I just wanted to say so yeah oh. and breathe <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Okay, I'm done. Yeah, I, I think I think uh, uh, since uh, we're not used to doing these chats, so we let's consider this like a warm-up thing. And next time we will have maybe maybe hopefully a more coherent and and more <laughs> directed thing. And uh, I'm gonna start wrapping this one up now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, this yeah. one's been all over the place, like Outrunners, Chaos yeah. Nova, <laughs> writing groups, man, just pff, love well, it. That's, that's, we have been up to all that, so it's like, deal with it. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to have to animate those shades dropping down now, yeah. like they do in every video, with the, <laughs> <laughs> deal with it. Oh, man. Right, so. Oh, thank you so much for watching. Thank you. We're wrapping this one up. Uh, find us on Twitter. Find us on YouTube. Um, Great seeker. If you're a view seeker, you might get uh, like internet points during the in December event. Aha! Uh-huh, there is that as well. And uh, watch out for outrunners. Uh, what was it called? Outrunners from the ruins. From the ruins. That's from like out ruins. tomorrow, today, any day now. Yeah, yeah. it's coming. The storm it's is coming. coming. Ah, ah, the storm is coming. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna awkwardly cut off the recording now. Bye.